All right. Hey, good morning. It's Friday. We made it, right? And <clears throat> so uh, we celebrate, right? End of the end of the week as far as the work week. If you're one of those working stiffs, as we used to call it, and um, so me, I'm off. I'm gonna be. I'm uh, teaching here, and I'm gonna head up to Odenville and finish up a fireplace and uh, put in a countertop and all the things you have to do to help your son launch uh, his own little um, family. Really, I mean, they're getting married next week, so. Very excited about it. I mean, I, we love Rachel and uh, love what God's done <clears throat> in their lives, and so it's a I man. It's a good season for me in town. So yeah, yesterday, uh, got to hang out with a buddy of mine, <clears throat> talk about some new business ventures that we're planning in the in the uh, January, uh, doing some audible books, <clears throat> things like that, and uh, and then uh, man, the Tamster and I got to go back to Nichols Nook last night. Always fun. Uh, we had just good conversation just among ourselves, uh, this week and, um, it was good. Normally we kind of hang out with some different people and meet and everything else, but it was just a good night. Um, so I, I like hanging with the Tampster and so it's good. Um, so that's where we are. So today I'm going to be working and then I think I got basketball tonight and, um, that's my day. So, but right now I'm ready to launch into some truth. We are in John chapter five and, uh, <clears throat> this is, one long conversation that Jesus is having with the Jews, the, the leaders, <clears throat> whoever made their way into uh, the pool area at Bethesda and um, were near those porticos when, when Jesus healed that man and they saw him walking around with a pallet, uh, that stirred everything up. Uh, and so now it just it just uh, stoked the fire of the of the Jews because they were already upset that he had what he had done with their temple and and several other things the signs that they do there was just upheaval and they didn't like any of this control thing that was that they were losing and so this was just one more and this healing according to John is the one that made the Jews decide we're going to persecute this man. He is not going to be our friend. We are not going to let him in our circle. We are not going to listen to anything he has to say. We are going to slam him, and we're going to slam him hard. He is our political adversary, if you will, and so we are going to burn him. <clears throat> that was their plan. Um, and, and then we're going to see later <clears throat> that, um, that, that they've decided now, no, no, we're, we're going to kill him. That's what we're going to do. So this is where it's going in John chapter 5. And so he he has uh, blown the lid off, right? He's clearly stated that he is equal with God. And the, and the Jews understood it. You 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 you. I mean, uh, scholars and all these other guys can act like Jesus never said that he was equal with God, but the, the Jews would beg to differ. That's what irked them when he claimed that he was equal to God. They're going, that's it. We're going to kill him. That's it. Uh, <clears throat> now, how did he do that? Well, because he said, I have the I, I have the same nature as God. I have the same works as God. I'm doing this. We 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 we're, we're one. Uh, I have the same power. I have the same authority. I have the same honor that's due me because I am God, right? So that's 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 their in their face. Let me let me read that and just kind of remind us of that. Uh, Ephesians, I mean, um, yeah, John five uh, twenty. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself is doing. And the Father will show him greater works than these so that you will be amazed. Right? So what's he saying? Hey, you haven't seen anything yet. I mean, we're just getting started here. You, you know the Jews have to just freak out at this point because he's already stirred up trouble. And now he's going, hey, I'm just getting started. Just wait. Uh, and so, you, I mean, you just feel the tension of what's, of what's going on with this rabble rouser in the Jewish mind uh, over here claiming to be God, and but yet he is doing the works of God. I mean, you see it. He's... He's, he's created, he's done signs and wonders. He cleansed the temple. He's done all of these things. And so, uh, this, this is what's going on. And then, um, and then he says, verse 21, for just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, 
so the son also gives life to whom he wishes. He says, hey, you know, Emily, let me tell you something else. You know how uh, God is the giver of life? We all know that. Right? I mean, our Old Testament, you know, all you Jews, your scriptures, they all tell you that he's the giver of life. Uh, and in him is life. Well, guess what? It's in me too. Right? And so so this is <clears throat> this is what's going on. This is crazy stuff. So he says, um, so I can give life to whoever I wish because I'm God. Man, every word coming out of his mouth right now must feel like daggers to these Jews who want to believe that they are the holders of the truth. They are the supreme in charge of the whole planet, the whole world. They're it. Yet Jesus is just, just speaking words, and those words are just like darts coming at them. Now, then we get to verse 24, and he says this, Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who hears my words... And believes in him who sent me, what do they get? Eternal life. <clears throat> and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Now, that's a, that's a spiritual resurrection that he's talking about. So I, I, I say all that so that we understand the context of what's going on. Eternal life, and you pass from death to life. That's very like what Paul says in Ephesians 2, for you are dead in your trespasses and sins, right? That's who we are. Dead men walking. We're just zombies. There's no spiritual life in us. We, we are born without spiritual life. <clears throat> we have physical life, not spiritual life. We're dead in our trespasses and sins. We we are, there's a, there's a void there. And so just like the valley of the dry bones, God has to speak life into us. And we're going to get to that. So now, now we come to today. He says, truly, truly. Every time he says, truly, truly, what he's giving you and me is a truth bomb, right? Something that either was hidden and forgotten, something that was uh, covered over with lies and other traditions. So when every time Jesus says, truly, truly, he's like, time out. It's a truth bomb. I'm getting ready to lay it on you. So pay attention, <clears throat> right? So that's it. <clears throat> that's how we hear that. Truly, truly. And here he says this, a time is coming and even now has started or arrived when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Now, we already know because of Genesis that, that when sin entered, so did death, right? That's what, Jesus, that's what God said. In the day you eat of the fruit of that tree, you will die. Well, we know they didn't physically die because they're still standing there as he, after he, they had done that, they're still standing. So what did die? Their spiritual relationship and unity that was with the father was severed because of sin, because that's what sin does. That's why the, the prophet Isaiah says, your sins have made a separation between you and God. So when Jesus walks on the planet, there is deadness in the land, right? I'm not saying there weren't, like John the Baptist, he wasn't. And there, there, there may have been some others, Simeon, uh, who was waiting to see the, the Jesus when he was born. My eyes have seen thy salvation, and I'm ready to go to heaven now, right? So there were those who, who were walking, and um, even there, there are those who are walking that have spiritual life, but the majority of it, just a valley of dry bones, right? That that's what we're seeing. I want you to hear that. I want that. I want that in our minds as we see this. And so here's what he says: A time is coming, and even now has arrived, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in Himself, so He gave the Son also to have life in Himself. Now let's just talk about this. A time is coming. And he said, a season, a season is coming. And in fact, it's already started, right? And it has. The disciples, the, the five or, or seven or maybe 12 at this point, we only know of the five that John's given to us. And I try to stay in, in that text for us. They're alive. They've been awakened from the dead. John, uh, John the Baptist says, hey, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. What did they do? They followed him. And in him is life. And so, so they have it. The Samaritan woman 
She has life. She's one of those dry bones that woke up in that dry area of Samaria where the well of Jacob was. And so her bones began to rattle and she woke up. She goes and tells a dead town of the Samaritans. They, they begin to rattle a little bit, come to Jesus, and then many of them fully believe. And Jesus spends uh, two days with them explaining a lot of things. Then there's a royal official son who on his path home to his, uh, to his son who was sick to the point of death, he awakened. And so his bones rattled and, and he had spiritual life. And the scripture says his household had spiritual life. And so, so we see that this is already happening. And so that's why he says a time is coming, but it's already arrived. There's already the elements of it. This thing's happening, and you can't stop it. Jesus' ministry of giving life, and this may be a newsflash for you, Jesus' ministry of giving life didn't begin at the resurrection. It began when he showed up on earth because he is the Logos. He is the Word, and it is the Word that brings life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's it. You got to, this is it. There's no, nothing else. So Jesus' ministry of salvation didn't begin at the cross. It began as the Logos spoke truth. And by believing, they were awakened to life, born from above. We could maybe even add Nicodemus to this. I'm hesitant to do so because John doesn't say that Nicodemus came to Christ and was awakened at that moment and believed. But we do know at the end of the story, he does. But so clearly, the rattling of the bones of Nicodemus has happened, right? And how did it happen? Because of the cross and the resurrection? No, because of the Logos, because of the word, right? What, 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 is, uh, what did the Samaritans, after they heard Jesus, and they said, now, hey, we, we don't believe simply because of what you said, but because of what he said. And we know that he is what? The Savior of the world right? So are you getting this picture? This is crazy good stuff, right? Now he says, and the time is coming. So what he's saying is, hey, it's here, but the time is coming. So there, it's, a, it's a then and now thing. Right now, it's among us. But what is coming is the death and resurrection of Christ. That unleashes the torrent of the Holy Spirit and the spirit fire that falls on those who believe. And it's a whole new deal right? But this is where we are now. So John begins this conversation, John the Baptist, by saying the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, right? That's the phrase. Remember that. And so that's what's going on. What we're seeing here <clears throat> is still a transition from Old Testament to New Testament. They are believing in Jesus because they see him. The Old Testament believed that God was going to send a Messiah, right? Abraham believed that, that Isaac was the son of the promise and there would be redemption, there would be a savior. And it was based on that belief that, the, that God says, I'm going to reckon that to you as, as salvation. And it was reckoned to him as faith. And so Abraham, his bones rattled and he woke up, right? And so you have that. You have that down through the deal. <clears throat> um, and so what we're seeing here is these people right now that we just mentioned, um, the disciples, uh, the uh, the woman at the well, the Samaritans, um, the uh, the the uh, royal official, his household, all of them uh, were believing not in some cross and some resurrection, but they believed that in him was life. And, and that was credited to them as righteousness, just like Abraham. See, there's a, you didn't get saved differently in the Old Testament than you do in the New Testament. It's the same thing. The words of God bring life. Those looking forward to what he will do, got it by, receive life by faith. Those of us who, after the cross, look at the cross and see what he did, we believe that. And it's reckoned to us as righteousness. So everything is about Christ. It is about his words. That's why, that's why John makes the statement, he is the logos, right? He is the logic. He is the reason. He is the truth behind which holds everything together. 
And so life, to be held together, to be brought to its perfect place, is because they believe what he says. They believe his words, that he is the Savior of the world, that he is a Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, that he is God, very God, in the flesh, right? Are we clear on that? This is crazy good stuff. I, I'm, I'm, Man, it's hard not to get excited about this. Now, John 1, 4, remember this? In him was life. In him was life. Not because of the resurrection. It's, it's in him. Right? And only in Jesus is their life. This is this is why you and me as believers as a whole, not maybe specifically, but as a whole, find great resistance in the world. Because Satan knows what maybe even the humans don't know. And so while there are Muslims who are being attacked, Satan knows Muhammad is not life. So he fans the flames of that, right? So he's not, his henchmen aren't out there trying to uh, destroy uh, Muslims. No, nor Buddhists, because he knows that, Satan knows that Buddha in him is not life. So he fans the flames of that. So you see Hinduism and there are millions of gods. Listen, there's no life in any of that. But Satan knows that, so he fans that flame. Why are the Hindus and the Muslims and the Buddhists not being persecuted? Now, they're beating up each other. But that's just because Satan came to ki still kill and to destroy, right? Uh, Mother Earth. There's no life in Mother Earth. There's no life in, in all of that gunk. That's why Satan fans it into flame, man. Let's talk about let's talk about climate. Let's talk about all this stuff. Let's just fan the Mother Earth thing. Let's talk about that. There's no life in the oligarchs. All of the which 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 we 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 are ruled by oligarchs even here in America. I mean, our presidential deal, man. They they all they're just wealthy folk and everything else, and and so is the world, and 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 it's run by these wealthy people, right? There's no life in that. So Satan fans that into flame, man. Everybody's a globalist today, right? That's that's the deal. This is the reality of Elisha and the dry bones. Remember the story? I'm not going to read it to you, but you know it. Elisha walks out and he sees this. God takes him to a valley and says, you see these bones? Can these bones live? Elisha goes, man, only you know that. What does he say? What, is, what does God tell Elisha? Speak to these bones. What's Elisha doing? Mouthing the words of life, of the Logos, of God himself right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, right? So that is what Elisha speaks, because he spoke what God told him to speak. Speak those things. The Word was given, and what happened? Man, stuff, sinew, and, and muscle, and all of that began to fill, so that these bones began to stand up. Listen, it's, the Father has life in him. Did he not do that in that valley of dry bones? And that's why Jesus says, as the Father has life in him, so also he has given life in me, right? That's what he says. Um, and so in verse 26, for as the Father has life in himself, right? God is the giver of life. God, God put life in those dead bones. And he says, so he gave the Son to, to have life in himself. So now Jesus walks, and what's he doing? The same thing. He's speaking life. Not through Elisha, because he doesn't need to. Through his own son of man flesh, God is speaking. And what's happening? Bones are being rattled. I just, this is important that we hear. Because we have so perverted the gospel that we don't understand. It's not, it's not how you can manipulate somebody down to an altar. It's, it, it has nothing to do with any of that. It has everything to do with the words of life. It is How shall they hear unless someone tells them. Jesus' words have life, right? So you and me, hey, listen, we, we're, I'm walking among the valley of dry bones, aren't you? Don't you know a lot of people you see and they're just dead spiritually? What do we do about that? We speak the words of the Logos, right? We speak the name of Jesus and we speak about him. And what happens? The Spirit gives life. That That's it. We don't do anything. Only the Spirit does that. He's He's not talking about physical but uh, hearing, but spiritual hearing. That's why Jesus says, he who has, the, has ears, let him hear, right? 
And so, man, this is powerful stuff. Look, look Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For you were dead in your trespasses and sins. God, but God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love for you, made you alive by faith, right? And, and that too is a gift, not of works. And that's what's happening to the Jews. They all think it's about works, and he's like, it's not that. Ephesians 5, remember, remember where Paul says, uh, awake, you, oh, you sleeper, right? Rise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. What's he saying? Hey, man, you bunch of dead bones out there, wake up. Stand up. God's going to give you life. He is, according to John, the light of the world, and he is life, right? That's it. In him was light, and in him was life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Man, we're not going to get to the other resurrection, but that's the first. He, he talks about two resurrections here, and that's that's the one he talks about today. There's a spiritual resurrection that's taking place. It started happening with the disciples, and it is continuing on to today. There will, and we'll look at it Monday, another resurrection, and that's at the end of days. We'll see that Monday. May the Lord, Lord bless you. Have a great weekend. I can't wait to share more truth with you Monday morning.